Hi, I'm Jenny Reese, Nebraska Extension Educator. Today I'm out in a soybean field. I've been getting some off-target herbicide calls. And so I decided to walk through what I do on diagnosing what's going on in these fields to hopefully help our farmers and agronomists out there. First question I ask is regarding were there any post applications made to the field? You want to determine if there's any potential for any tank contamination that came from either burn down applications or applications to other crops such as corn or to pastures. If you can rule out tank contamination, then you need to ask questions regarding any other herbicide products that were applied to the field, um, such as during the burn down or even the pre-emergence applications. Rule out any potential for viruses and so forth. In this case, we can rule all those other options out. We know that we are in a field that's surrounded by cornfields, and so now we're trying to figure out how to stage this plant and determine when the injury occurred. So if we're looking at this plant here, what we want to do is we want to count the number of nodes. So I found the unifoliate here. So I go back, this is the scar where the cotyledon was. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is eight, where these trifoliates are completely unfurled and no longer touching. Number nine, they're still touching, so I'm not going to count them. I then take eight times 3.75. 3.75 is the number of days that the University of Nebraska research has found it takes for a soybean plant to produce a new node. So 8 times 3.75 days gives us about 30 days ago is when these plants emerged. Okay, it gives us a ballpark anyway. I then look at this plant and I'm looking for the number or where the injury first occurred. So if I go 1, 2, 3, if I look carefully on this trifoliate here, what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing here is at the very tip where cell division was occurring you can see some kind of shoestringing or some damage occurring right here so three times seven point three point seven point <laughs> three times three point seven five is around eleven days so if I go from emergence and go forward around 11 days looking at my calendar here it puts me in the ballpark of around right around before around a memorial day oops show you the calendar 7 8 9 10 11 is in this may 28th 29th time frame okay so that gives us an idea there. Another thing that I do um, as another option is I just count the total number of trifoliates that were affected. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and in this case I've got six that are truly unfurled and affected. Six times 3.75 is 23 days. So if I take 23 days back from today's date, I've got, here's 14, here's 21, 22. So 23 would have been, again, anywhere from May 26th to going, using my other method, May 26th to 29th. In that time frame is when we're, st we're seeing the injury that's occurring on these soybean plants here. In talking with the farmers, Again, this field is surrounded by cornfields, and they were all making post-herbicide applications, including dicamba, on their corn in that time frame around Memorial Day. So in this case, it all, it all works out for correlating to the corn applications that were occurring in this area at that time. This method works really well for that first dicamba application or off-target movement that occurs to soybeans. If you get a potential second or third injury from dicamba, it um, may not correlate as well, but it is one way that I'm using anyway to help diagnose 
a time frame for when injury may have occurred to the soybeans. So what does the farmer do now? The farmer essentially can do a couple things. The biggest thing is just wait. We're blessed in Nebraska that once we get flowering, as you can see on these plants occurring right here, we grow indeterminate beans where we're continuing to get new nodes with leaves and flowers develop. So that allows our plants to grow out of the damage in time. Water is one of the best tools, so we're blessed again with irrigation and rainfall will also allow these plants to grow out of the injury more quickly. If you want to file a formal complaint, you need to do that with your State Department of Ag. That's not something that Extension can help you with. We can only help you with education and helping determine. Um, we can only help you with the education, and that's why I created this video to help you more look at the damage. We have a lot of dicamba resources and just resources in general for crops at our crop website from the University of Nebraska at cropwatch.unl.edu. We also have an information regarding what our research has shown regarding any yield impacts. Just talking to farmers last year that were impacted by off-target movement, the majority of farmers didn't see significant yield impacts in Nebraska, thankfully, and I think that's mostly because um, they were low concentrations and we are blessed again to have indeterminate soybeans and be able to have irrigation to allow these plants to grow out of the symptoms. But yield impacts really de are dependent upon when these plants were affected and what the concentration was of that product. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, all of our information can be found at cropwatch.unl.edu. Thank you.